Hi, and welcome back. This video is part of the free Blazor Crash Course. In this crash course, we build an actual Blazor WebAssembly application based on .NET 5. In this video, we will implement a simple data table and populate its data using an API call from the Blazor web application to an ASP.NET Web API backend. We will also store the form data provided by the user using another API call. Hi, I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years of experience with the .NET platform. In this crash course, we focus on Blazor web app development. Let's take a look at what we're going to build. In the completed demo application, we have an earnings page with a table on the left and the form on the right. In the previous video of this series, we built the form that we see on the right. In this video, we will implement the table on the left and populate its data with data from an API. We will also implement the form submit, which will add a new item to the table on the left. Now, let's jump into Visual Studio and let's implement the earnings page. Right now, we only have the earnings form component on our page. Let's change that. I insert a prepared HTML snippet for the table. Now let's go through the code together. First of all, we make use of a lot of Bootstrap CSS. It doesn't matter if you don't know Bootstrap. It makes our page look great and we don't have to mess with the CSS right now. I still want to explain how our layout works. We have a row and within that row we have two columns. We have an 8 unit wide column that contains the table and on the right side we have a 4 unit wide column that contains the form component we built in the previous video. Within the 8 unit wide column on the left we have our HTML table that contains the data we want to display on the page. First we have the table header with the labels for each column and below we have the data enclosed by the tbody element. Now let's take a closer look at the Blazor specific parts. The if statement checks if there is any data to display. If there is, we use a for each statement to render every data row. If there is no data, we show a loading message. Within the for each statement, we render every field from the earning variable. It is a new type we're going to build next. But before we implement the new class, let's implement the code section. We need to declare the earning variable. We do that by adding a private earnings variable. Next, let's assume we already implemented our earning class. We want to load the data as soon as the user navigates to the earnings page. We can achieve that by overriding a lifecycle method. We override the onInitialized async method. This method gets called whenever the user navigates to the page. It has no arguments and because it is an asynchronous method, it returns a task. The implementation of the method is simple, but first, let's inject an instance of the HTTP client. We scroll up and use the add inject directive and inject the HTTP client and make it available as the HTTP variable. If you ask yourself what implementation we get from the dependency injection container for the HTTP client type, Let's look at the program.cs file. We already talked about it in the first video of this crash course. On line 20, we add an implementation of the HTTP client type to the dependency injection container and configure it to use the correct base address to access the backend. Back in our method, we use the following line to fetch data from the API. We use the getFromJSONAsync method to fetch data from the API slash earnings endpoint and assign the return data to the earnings variable. We're almost there. The last thing we need to do is to tell the component that we changed its state. Blazor will re-render the component if the state has changed. We do that by calling the state has changed method. Now that we implemented the earnings page, we need to create the earnings class which holds our data. We want to place this class in the shared project because we use it client-side and server-side. Right-click on the shared project and add a new class called earning. Again, to save us some time in the code that is not Blazor specific, I'm going to insert a code snippet with the implementation of this class. The earning data class contains fields to hold our information. We also defined an ID property with a globally unique identifier that will allow us to distinguish different data rows. 
In the earnings page file, we can add a using statement to fix the missing type errors. We're almost there. We already have the client code and we have the data clause. We now need to implement a controller that returns our data. Again, the focus of this crash course is to learn about Blazor. That's why I go through building this earnings controller quickly. I create the new earnings controller class and replace the code with the following snippet. We have an API controller attribute on the class, a private field that contains a reference to the repository of the type earning. We get the implementation in the constructor using dependency injection. Next, we have the get method, which has the HTTP get attribute applied. We use the repository to return all entries ordered by date. Next, we need to implement the repository. We create a new folder called storage and create an interface named iRepository. I insert another code snippet that contains the definition of the add, remove and the get all method. Let's implement the iRepository interface. We create a memory repository class in the storage folder. Of course, I also prepared a snippet for the implementation of this class. We use a list that holds our data in memory as long as the application runs. Back in the earnings controller, we can import the missing namespace for the iRepository type. Last but not least, we need to register the repository with the dependency injection container. We create another class called sample data. We insert another snippet. This class contains the definition of an extension method we're going to use in the application startup class in a few seconds. We create a few data rows with sample data and register the repository with the dependency injection container. In the startup.cs file, we call the add earnings repository method in the configure services method. Wow, that was a lot. The good news is that we now have all the API code we need in the server project. I know, if you don't know ASP.NET Web API yet, this is a lot. At this point, you don't need to worry about it. Let's focus on Blazor development in this crash course. One last thing though, if you use Blazor WebAssembly, you're not limited to using ASP.NET Web API as your backend. You can consume other APIs or you can implement your API using for example Node.js and Express, using JavaScript or TypeScript. Now that we have the Blazor code and the server-side code in place, let's build and run the application. Click on the Earnings menu to open the Earnings page. And there it is. We have a table on the left showing the sample data and the form on the right. Now let's open the developer tools and take a closer look at how we load the data. I press F5 to reload the application. As we can see, there is a fetch request to the localhost colon 44358 slash API slash earnings address. If I click on it, we can see the JSON data we receive in the preview window. Now that we can fetch data from our API and display it on the earnings page, we want to handle the form submit and add user data to the application. Open the earning form component. First, we want to inject the HTTP client into our component. Next, we jump to the implementation of the handle valid submit method. We don't need the success variable anymore and delete it. Next, we use the HTTP client instance to post JSON data to the API. Because we call an asynchronous method, we need to mark the handle valid input method with the async keyword and change the return type from void to task. Open the earnings controller in the server project. We add a method to handle the HTTP POST request. Now let's start the application again. Open the earnings page and fill in the form on the right and click the submit button. Now let's reload the page and we can see the new item we just added. As you can tell, we're almost there. Wouldn't it be great if the table would refresh as soon as we submit the form? Let's head back to Visual Studio. We post data from the earning form component, but the table is part of its parent component, the earnings page. We need to find a way to tell the earnings page to refresh whenever a user clicks the submit button of the earning form component. There are multiple ways we can do that. For now, we use a simple solution. 
let's define a new property in the earning form component. We create a public property of type event callback and name it on submit callback. We also add the parameter attribute, which makes this property available when the component is used. Next, we execute the callback after we post the data to the API in the handle valid submit method. The idea is that we provide a callback to the earning form component that gets executed after we send the data to the API. Now we need to provide the callback from within the earnings page. We open the earnings page and implement a refresh method. In this method, we want to reload the data. We already have this behavior in the uninitialized async method. Let's extract the code into a load data method to call it in both the uninitialized async and the refresh method. Next, we want to provide the refresh method to the earning form component. We can do that by setting the onSubmit callback attribute to the refresh method in the template definition. Don't forget to add an add symbol in front of the method name. Let's start the application again. We go to the earnings page and once again we fill in the form on the right side. This time, when we hit the submit button, the table on the left refreshes and we instantly see the new data loaded from the API. Congratulations! You successfully implemented API handling into our Blazor WebAssembly application. This video is the third part of the Blazor crash course. You learned how to save data and how to load data from the backend using the HTTP client. Using the HTTP client, we learned how to use dependency injection in Blazor applications. Next, we implemented a simple API controller using ASP.NET Core Web API. We learned how implementing the uninitialized async method allows us to execute code when a page is loaded. You also learned how to use the event callback type to provide a method from a parent component to its child and execute the method in the child component. We use this technique to reload data in the parent component when a user submits the child component's form. In the following video of this series, we'll be implementing a simple modal dialog solution using a Blazor component and Bootstrap. You'll learn about the power of reusable components. Tell me in the comments what you think about Blazor so far. Do you see its potential and how do you like the programming model? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next part of the series and see you in the next video.